All right. A very, 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 very good evening to each and every one of you. I can see quite a couple of us have joined. Karibuni to our session today. My name is Jackie Ogonji, and I will be your moderator for this session. Uh, allow me to just give you some guides on this session so that you can at least um, have the house or rather ground rules. So all participants are requested to mute their mics so that we could be able to manage our background noise and any distractions. It's in the evening and we do take cognizance that all of us are back home due to curfew as well. Um, your videos, uh, we are also requesting just to enable us a stream better sound. Kindly um, switch off your videos and we will only allow the speaker and myself, I'll switch mine on as well when I am speaking to you so that we can maintain the social connection. Uh, you are permitted to engage us uh, using the chat that is at the bottom of your screen or phone. Um, just type in any questions, any suggestions or any recommendations that you may be having to enable us uh, keep, keep, keep in touch with you guys as well as um, uh, ensure that we keep engaging and I will always involve Anne at a, uh, any particular time so that she can be able to address um, your questions and your suggestions or any recommendations that you may have in relevance to our topic today. Um, we do take cognizance that a couple of people have joined both ladies and gentlemen. So good afternoon, it's a Women on Boards Network event. However, good afternoon, uh, good evening, both ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining this session. I will um, introduce our speaker, but we do hope that uh, the session is going to be insightful, that's just like they've always been. We also hope you're keeping safe. Uh, you can invite a few other members to listen with you uh, this, evening, this evening, because we're going to talk about a very critical thing, wealth management, which is part of uh, financial management, and that's part of your wheel of life to ensure that you're still kicking in. This month is uh, Mental Health Month, so we hope you're staying focused on your mental health. Uh, we did have a session last week, and the week before, I, uh, two weeks before, we had spoken about psychological support, which is um, directly related to mental health, and it's also health and fitness, so we are hoping that you're keeping fit at home as much as you're also staying safe. Allow me to introduce Anne, beautiful, brilliant lady, um, who I happen to meet because of the Women on Boards Network, Anne Wamboi Gaida. So um, I will just take you through Anne's profile so that you appreciate uh, who Anne is and the knowledge and um, wealth of knowledge that she has and uh, the reason as to why she was the best person to tackle this um, session today. So Anne is a global trade investment expert focusing on global trade, investment banking and investment management in Africa and also a wealth and business coach. I don't know how many of us look for business coaches, but here is one. Anne brings expertise in understanding how global wealth is created and creating value for organizations by assisting them in growing successful global brands. And I'm assuming that definitely, if you're growing an organization, there are individuals. So she will be speaking from an individual perspective. Anne has over 20 years of professional experience, um, 15 years cumulative experience in financial service industry, and she has worked uh, for a licensed fund manager and a transaction advisory firm in Nairobi. She has financial planning experience, having established her own financial consulting firm and international experience, having consulted for various businesses in California, Sugenta, China, and Asia. Anne is a former banker and has worked for Bank of America in the US for over seven years. She's currently the executive director of OIT. OIT is the organization of women in international trade and is working towards helping women in international trade to transform their communities through global trade. Anne is also a founder of uh, Regal Group Africa, which uh, is a diversified financial services firm that over offers advisory and real estate services to businesses, individuals, institutions, and governments across East Africa. She holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Finance, Real Estate, and Law, 
and also a, a minor in international business from California State University and an MBA in finance from Howard International Business School in San Francisco in the US. Speaking engagements, she has been on Citizen, speaking on the business show and various other media uh, yeah. places. She has also been speaking in different African and economic developments speaking in women forums, uh, speaking with different investment groups and companies, and very passionate about wealth creation for all the African uh, economic development. So that is the long profile of Anne, purely wealth management, financial management, um, talking about trade, and it's, and it's the reason as to why Anne has been invited today and humbly accepted to be our speaker. Now, Anne, we do not want to take too much time. Um, there are people who are wondering, okay, so during crisis management, what, what am I going to do? And we have a set of uh, members who are both um, individuals who have their own companies and we also, our, part of our members are also employed. Um, we do have a lot of our members who are sitting on various boards and we also have, um, people who are aspiring to either be entrepreneurs or uh, as well as get to vote. So financial management and wealth, crea wealth creation is actually very critical for you as you sit in a board and also um, as you uh, work around your own uh, wealth management as an individual and, and also for your own wealth creation in terms of uh, being able to focus on what um, feedback you can give when such uh, conversations happen even in your place of work. So Anne Karibu Sana, I'm hoping that everybody can be able to see Anne as clear as I am able to see her. Welcome to Women on Boards Network. And uh, we are happy to have you on board and let's listen to how we can create our wealth even during this time of crisis. Karibu. Okay, um, just let me work with the people. Are you able to hear Anne? I can't, Anne, are you there? Okay, um, I can see communication. Thank you for reaching out. And do you need to unmute yourself? I think she may have frozen um, in terms of her, her connectivity. So that's just a technical hitch. We should um, get in touch with Anne to see if she can uh, reconnect back. Hannah, could you kindly assist Anne? So uh, please, let, let's give me feedback in terms of uh, maybe what's your expectation on the chart? What are you looking at in terms of uh, financial management? And um, what, what is your expectation at the end of this session? Maybe just to share with you a few things before I get Anne back on board. Uh, in times of crisis, there's quite a number of things that um, we can, or there's a number of things that actually we can take the opportunity um, to, to look into. Uh, and one of the obvious things that have been there is um, a lot of knowledge. And this is a time when you can actually use uh, the time that you have been given to learn a lot. So self-development has become a pretty um, important thing in our lives, but the opportunity has brought itself. So there's a lot of channels that now you can use and there's a lot of uh, personal development opportunities that you're having. Um, another area is you can cut costs. Um, and uh, one of the things I was discussing with Hannah today morning is I was telling her with all these webinars, it's back to back. We started with 
Hannah at seven, and then I moved into other meetings. And I told her I no longer rely on land, so I have two. I have got a portable uh, modem, and then I've got the internet in the house. So if there's no power, then I can use the portable modem. And uh, one of the things I have done is I, 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 I don't buy bundles anymore, sorry, Safaricom and Airtel, but I use that portable modem everywhere because I thought it's so expensive to keep buying, um, to keep buying uh, Airtel bundles, yet I pay so little uh, per month and I get a lot of bandwidth so I can use it. So I connect. So when there's no power, I can still manage. And then I was telling her, I think it's important to invest in a good phone because now if your machine crashes or if your machine is not able to connect, then you can easily just swap and get into your Zoom meeting or WebEx or whatever on your phone because all you need to do is download. So our necessities have sort of changed. It's almost a must that you invest in a good machine, invest in a good phone, um, have connectivity everywhere and anywhere. I was speaking to somebody who uh, asking them, are you joining us? And they said, yes, I'm joining you as I'm driving um, and I'm listening. And I'm sure there are a couple of you who are also doing the same, but that's because you, ha you have connectivity. So managing your finances. Then for you to be able to know as you research and develop yourself, you can also see what is relevant in the market uh, for you to currently invest in. And also keeping track of your finances is something that is pretty, pretty important. How much uh, uh, time do you use um, on, on phone? Can you cut it down? Um, are, are you tracking how much you're paying on various things? So it's just making sure that you keep track of what you're spending and then see what are you cutting down on. I can see we have some slides. Um, Anne, are you back now? Yes, I'm back. Sorry, I don't know. The internet just went off and I'm hoping that that doesn't happen again but we should be fine. I can go ahead and just do a short presentation and then start answering questions from the audience. All right, that's okay. We were just trying to navigate how we can uh, create some money so that when you give us the, 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 the ideas of how we can grow and manage our wealth, we can see where to place that. So I'll allow you to proceed. I think I'll switch off my video just to see if um, that will not put you off and then you can carry on with your presentation. Thank you, Anne. Okay, thank you, Jackie. All right, so as I was mentioning and, uh, earlier that I'm very passionate about helping people grow and manage their wealth. And for me, I always start, I always say it starts with the wealth formula. There are three things that you really need to do when you're looking to grow and manage your wealth. The first thing is to actually have a wealth mindset. Anyone who is wealthy will tell you it all starts with the mind, right? If you think abundance, if you believe that you can actually become wealthy, then that's the first step. And the key here is actually to have what is called positive financial network and have passive income generation. Those are the two things you really need to have in order for you to be able to be wealthy. The second thing you need to do for you to be wealthy is really have a wealth plan. All of you who are directors, who have been in business, who are in leadership, you really understand that you cannot go anywhere and be successful unless you have a plan in place and a way for you to implement it. So actually having a wealth plan is very important, understanding where you are currently and where you want to go. Especially now in this time of COVID, you really have to be able to take that time to really look at your financial position and then make the right decisions. And I'll go into details more about that. And then the third thing, which is really important, is really execution. You can have the best plan in place, but I can tell you this, if you do not execute, then there's nothing that you're doing. And for you to execute, you have to be very disciplined. Wealth is grown incrementally, right? It's taken one at a time. And it just means that if you're having a salary, like Jack was mentioning, and some of you are employed, it's about putting aside some money from your salary every month. And if you're in business, it's about using the best profits that you make and putting that aside and making sure that you're using what we call company to do the, ma the magic. And I'll be showing that later on about how to do that. The key here is about investing, investing, investing. Now for you to go ahead and start investing, you need to put the strategies in place and I'll just tell you a little bit about what we do at Regal Africa and especially our wealth management department. What we do here is we help our clients to do a wealth plan. We help our clients in wealth structuring and wealth advisory. 
Really, we focus with clients who are executives like yourself, professionals, entrepreneurs, and creatives. And really, it's a bespoke service whereby we really look at certain things, like we offer financial advice, tax planning, retirement, and estate planning. For you to actually now put together this wealth plan, I'll start off by just talking about the individual perspective because all of us have to take care of our personal finance. And then I'll talk about the business perspective. When it comes to the individual perspective, you really have to understand, like I mentioned earlier, where are you and where do you want to go? And the first thing is understanding your financial network. So when you're looking at your financial network, you're actually saying, okay, what are my assets, which is what I own, right? Or what is my liabilities, which is what I owe? And as long as you own more things than you owe, then you're in a good financial position. It's the same thing like when you're looking in business, you're actually looking at a balance sheet and saying, I have more assets and liabilities, so I'm in a good position in business. It's the same thing that you do when you're, look, when you're looking at it from a financial perspective. Um, individual perspective. You actually look to look at your individual net worth and then take the steps around that. So beyond looking at your financial net worth, you really need to look at cash flow management, right? Especially right now in time of COVID, I was just doing a little bit of calculations from a few clients and people are actually saving a lot of money. And I'll talk about ladies because I know there are very many ladies here. If you look at it and you say, for example, I spend about a couple of thousand making my hair, a couple of thousand going to the spa, I'm spending money going for lunch and coffee with my friend. Easily you spend 20, 30, 40, 50,000 Kenya shillings every month. And for the last two months, you've been staying home, so you've not been spending that money. So the question is, where is that money going to? And have you made the decision for that extra money that you're not spending to actually put it somewhere that is gonna generate uh, 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 profit, uh, generate income for you. So it's, you have to look at your cash management to understand what am I making, how am I spending it, and make sure that you're saving and you're actually thinking about the future. So these are just the basic steps and I won't spend too much time here. All I have to say is you have to understand where you are, where you want to go, and financial network is actually the key. The same thing that you do individually is what you also need to do in regards to if you own a business. So if you're a director in a family business and you're the one in charge of strategy, you're the one overseeing the family business, you also have to do the same thing because you understand that when you're actually growing your business, you're growing the family wealth through that business. So the same thing you need to do is actually understand your financial net worth for your business, but the key here is understanding your cash flow for your business. So this time of COVID, what is happening is probably there's less revenue depending on what kind of business you're in. And so you have to be very careful about managing your cash. And then the, the other thing you need to be looking at is really understanding statement and seeing what it is that you need to do to improve your revenue and manage your expenses. But I think what I would really want people to be doing at this time or encouraging people to do at this time is really talking about business succession plans. This is very critical because I think a lot of people who are in business have not, or family businesses have really not put this in place, right? So when something happens to the CEO, it then takes a long time for someone to be identified, right? So, um, and it's not only in family business, even in corporates, you will actually see that it takes time before they find someone to replace um, uh, the person at the helm. So it's very critical at this time to really look at business succession planning. But the one thing I really wanted to talk to people, to all of you today, is the difference between saving and investing, right? I always say before you start investing, you really need to save, right? Now saving, what is saving? Saving is just putting money aside for a rainy day, it just means that you have an emergency fund for at least three to six months. Say, for example, if your monthly expenses are 100,000 a month, you wanna make sure that at least you have 300,000 somewhere put aside so that if anything happened, then you're able to tap into that for the next couple of months. Now, some of you who've probably not done that before, this is when now you need to be very careful and say, you know what, going forward, I need to have an emergency plan, 
at the side, right? And you want to put this, for example, in a money market fund as opposed to a regular savings. The reason you want to do that is if you put money, for example, in your current account or in your savings account at the bank, it's very easy for you to go to the ATM and take it out. Or is it for you to walk into a bank and take it out? But if you put it in a money market fund, then by the time you request it in two, three days, before it comes into your bank account, you will only do that if you really, really need the money. So the first thing, like I mentioned, is for you to grow, you first have to have a savings because if you have a savings, then at least you have a cushion. Now you can get into the mentality of, okay, where do I put money to invest for the long term? Because that is where the value is and that's where the great returns are. So investments are really long term. When you're thinking about investing, you have to think about, okay, where do I put this? I won't need this money for three years, five years, 10 years, 20 years. That is investing. And when you're looking to invest, you have to look at the different asset classes. There are various um, asset classes where you can get returns. Uh, but um, what I have noticed is a lot of people put usually most of their money in real estate. Um, but I always say, uh, especially now after COVID, we'll start looking at real estate and say, is that the best option for investing? I think it is, but we, those are questions we need to be having. And I'll be discussing a little bit more about that. But the key here is when you're growing and you're managing your wealth, you need to have a diversified portfolio. You need to look at, like I said, assets in real estate. If you're in business, you have to look at your business as um, an asset class because as a business, you have the option of actually one day selling it. And if you sell it, then you'd be able to actualize that value of that business so business is an asset class um the, you can also invest in activities just means you're buying a share or a stock in for example the nairobi security exchange or the Nairo uh, the london stock exchange or the new york stock exchange depending where you are in the world or even if you're not there you can actually access those those markets now the great thing about equities and why i always tell people you want to be in the equity market is because you're actually getting a good return if you choose the right company and you're not doing any work, right? So for example, for me being a banker, I know how banks make a lot of money. And you know, it was a dream of mine to own a bank one day, but you know, you never know. But in this case, as I invest in, for example, equity bank or KCB or NCBA, just because I'm not working there, I own shares. So if James Mongi, who is the CEO of Equity Bank, is doing a really great job, guess what? The price of equity, um, um, of equity shares goes up. And the more it goes up, the more I gain. I'm able to get a good return. I also am able to get dividends if that particular company is getting dividends. So equity is a good way for you to be able to invest. The other thing that uh, we recommend people to do is to put money in a fixed income, especially if you are older, right? So the older you are, the more, the less risk you want to take because you do not have time for you to recover, right? For, for example, if you're in equities, the valuation of the price of the stock goes up and down. You might need the money for example, right now, and the price is down. So that's not a good place to be in. So the older you are, the more you want to be interested in putting your money in fixed income. And fixed income just means you're lending your money to somebody else. For example, you would buy, for example, a treasury bond, right? So you're lending money to the government. You can buy a corporate bond, so you're lending money to a company. So fixed income are usually uh, investments whereby you know that you have a guaranteed return for that particular time. So if you're going to an investment that tells you I'm going to be there for one year, three years, five years, you know for that period of time that you've invested in, you will be able to get that particular return that you were told from the very beginning. So for anyone who's very conservative, wants assurance, then fixed income is an asset class they wanna look at. Another asset class you want to look at is really Unitrust. Um, so Unitrust are just what we call collective investment schemes. Collective investment schemes just means that people come together and the money is managed by a, a professional money manager, right? 
So for example, in Kenya, there are different um, uh, licensed fund managers who are licensed by the Capital Markets Authority. So they do have different unit trusts. It could be like a money market fund. It could be an equity fund. It could be a balance fund or a bond fund. There are very many different types of unit trusts. And it actually depends on your risk tolerance, how much money you're putting in for you to know what is the best unit trust to, to invest in. So that's something that you need to, to look at. Uh, the other thing, which I think is the one which have a lot of opportunities, actually alternative investments. Alternative investments just means anything outside the ordinary. So ordinary investments are, you know, equity, fixed income, you know, real estate are traditional investments, but alternative investments are anything outside that. And I'm talking also a little bit more about that uh, as we go along. One of the things um, that I felt that I needed to discuss today was really what I call the money lessons, right? The key here that I've noticed why a lot of people are not growing or managing their money well is because, again, I talked about diversifying their portfolio. The other thing I know is especially right now because of COVID, a lot of people are scared, right? So everyone is putting money, for example, in the bank, but then you're not getting a good return, which just means that, for example, if you put it at the bank and you're not getting anything, you're still losing money because inflation is there, right? So 10 will not be 10 million shillings um, next year because of inflation. So you have to be very conscious about that you always want to make sure that you're putting your money somewhere whereby the returns are higher than inflation so that you are actually getting a good return they and uh, and then when you do that then you want to look at what the investment goal is for you to generate the best returns you definitely need to look long term not short term long term and we're talking about long term you're talking about more than five years years i know for most people you know five years seems a very long time but you know what if you're thinking about the future and really good returns you have to think about long term because time is your friend right so when you're talking about investing you're thinking i won't need this money anytime soon so i need to put it in something that will generate um good returns in the future the other thing that you really need to look at is every time i get any kind of money i want to put uh, money aside and i'll be um, um and this is really a good table that i wanted to just share and just shows you the power of interest and the power of being very diligent and being disciplined about putting money aside um jackie mentioned earlier that some of you are um are, are employed even though you're directors right so you could be at an ngo you could be at a corporate right so you're getting a salary every month or even if you're in business i always tell people you also want to have a salary for yourself so what this table just shows you that if you decide that you're going to put a certain amount of money every month diligently for our next couple of years it's very easy for you to become a million dollar uh to to have a hundred million kenya shillings right so Something like this would be, for example, if you contribute monthly contribution of 50,000, right? In 25 years, you'll have 100 million shillings in, in investments, just if your return is at 12%, right? And, and 50,000 shillings, like I was mentioning earlier, is not a lot of money, right? It's $500. It just means that every month you're putting aside 50,000 shillings, which is thing you spend that money doing not too much, right? Like I said, you're buying, you're going and getting your hair done, you're going to buy good outfits, you're, you're traveling, and those are things, good things to do, but when you look at how much that money can actually grow, then you think twice about buying things which are not um, that, that important. So you really have to look at what can I put aside every month that it and um the best practice is to put a minimum of 10 percent of whatever you're making 10 percent of your salary 10 percent of your business profit whatever income that you get you want to put at least 10 percent 10 percent aside now if you're not uh making your money periodically for, for example maybe you're a deal maker you know you're a consultant you get a large chunk of money all at once the thing that you need to be looking at is what 
we call the banker's rule. This is something that everyone needs to be familiar with because it will show you how you can double your money within a certain period of time. And this is what we call like the wealth builder's secret formula, right? So what happens is if you want to double your money, you need to understand what interest rate you're going to reach, you, you're, you're going to get. In this example, if I have 10 million Kenya shillings today and I want it to grow to 20 million Kenya shillings, what I need to do is to say, how long do I want before I double my money? So for example, if I want to double my money within six years, then what I need to be looking for is somewhere where I can get a return of 12%. If I get an investment return of 12%, then I know I will turn my 10, 10 million to 20 million in six years. If I get a return of 24%, then I will be able to double my money from 10,000 to 20,000 in three years. So you have to be very aware of the rule. And the reason I bring it up is a lot of people think that real estate is the only place that you can actually get a good return or double your money. So you always hear people say, you know what? I bought a plot, I bought an apartment, and it, doubles, it doubled its value in, in six years. Literally what you were doing is getting a return of 12%. But maybe you could have actually put that money somewhere and gotten 20% per annum and you'd have doubled your money before the six years. So real estate is not the only uh, uh, investment that you can actually double your income. You really have to find investment that can give you really good returns. And if, if you use them, you can be able to know this is the kind of investment I want to get into or this is not the investment that I want to get into because it will not get me where I want to go within the time frame that I have. All right. So with that, I'll just come into um, investment during COVID. Uh, I think this is a time whereby people need to be cautious, but not, um, not, but people have to make decisions. What I'm saying is I believe that this is a time that people need to be making calculated risks, or this is a time that you need to be strategizing, right? because opportunities are found during the times of crisis, right? So during this time of crisis, you have to find, depending on where you are financially, if you're in a situation where you don't know what's going to happen with your job or your business, then maybe you need to start working with professional money managers and then putting your money, for example, in a money market or in a fixed income fund. So that way, you know, you're secure, right? Uh, but if, for example, you have some money and you know that you won't need it within, you know, a couple of years and you want to get good returns, maybe this is time you want to be looking at the equities market because everyone is selling off their shares and so the prices have really gone down. So then maybe this is the time you want to look into that for you to be able to get a good return in the future. The other thing I highlighted here is actually REITs. REITs are real estate state investment trust. We only have one REIT in Kenya, but this is actually going to be the future because in the future, people will be investing in real estate, but collectively. And what you want is a professional money manager who's overseeing that. So what I would say is you want to be looking into that. What's happening in the REITs market because that is going to actually transform the way people invest in real estate. But in this time of COVID, cash is king. If you do not need to spend money please don't spend money you want to spend money where it's necessary or where you're getting a really good deal i believe that um distressed assets are coming um yesterday there was um research that was done by uh, both has consult and Cyton and different people in real estate right now if you if you want to get any kind of um, real estate, um, the prices have gone down by like 30%. And I foresee they're gonna probably then go down, right? This is happening because again, these developers really need to um, sell off their, their, their units or some people are in a position where they're like, you know what, I've lost my job or my business is not going too well. I need to liquidate my asset and my asset is in real estate. So if you have cash, you want to be looking out and saying, you know, what property can I buy? Now, you might not be able to 
buy right now because you know the land office is closed so there might not be any transactions going on right now but what you need to be doing is be on the lookout so that when a great opportunity presents itself then you can be able to actually tap into that and prepare to buy that asset but i do see distressed assets coming be it in real estate be it businesses that want to sell this is coming and so if you have cash you're in the right position you always want to look at a long-term view and i mentioned that earlier um and you also want to talk to financial advisors us at regal africa we are wealth advisors so we look at the whole financial picture and we are not really into trading for us at regal africa we are all about investing for the long run but if you want to take advantage of these short-term opportunities then maybe you want to speak to a financial advisor who can be able to then find those opportunities in the market whereby then they can be able to trade it. Now it's very risky, right? Because the prices are going up and down between the equity market, bit in Forex, bit in buying and selling community commodities. The opportunity is there, but I believe you need to have an expert who will showcase, who will be able to advise you for that. Don't try and do it yourself because if you do it yourself and you have no understanding about the trends or what's going on in public money. So you want to be careful about that. But um, and the last thing I think that everyone here should be looking at, which I think is an opportunity that's going to happen during and also after this pandemic, is actually angel investing or partnering with people in business. And the reason I'm saying that is because um, some of you might be having money right now and you're saying, you know, I don't want to put it in a money market and only get 9%. I don't want to put it in the equity market and it's fluctuating. I see business opportunities happening, but out of position to actually start the business myself. But I see young people who have great ideas, great energy, but they are not able, they don't have the money to actually actualize their vision. This is the time for you to identify these people with great ideas, great opportunity, and you can actually put your money into this business as an angel investor, right? And take the, the opportunity to actually invest in somebody but generate great returns in the foreseeable future. So those are the main tips that I would be giving um, each one of you. And um, this is a slide that I really want people to pay attention to because I think this is the new normal, which is alternative investments. Ali mentioned to you that historically people just buy plots, people buy real estate, you know, you know, everyone thought that real estate was probably just the, the thing to do and buying a plot and keeping it there and to double uh, within a certain amount of time. that is probably not what's going to happen in the future in the future what i think is going to happen or what i would like people to start thinking about is we need to go beyond this idea of let me buy a plot and keep it there and not earn anything right and it will double if i gone right or if i have extra money let me put my money in a circle that will not make you wealthy right a circle will not make you wealthy you put money in a circle so that you can borrow but it will not make you wealthy for you to be wealthy, you need to look at these three things. The first one is agribusiness. Agribusiness is potentially the best investment option in Africa. And the reason I say this is because in Africa, here in Kenya, we have land. And we have land that we can potentially use to actually generate a lot of food. And so we'll have food security in this country, but we'll also have abundance of food that we can be able to export agribusiness is a great investment option but it's also very risky so when you're going into agribusiness it's not the old way of doing agribusiness where you have one acre and then you know you just buy a few tomatoes here and then you try and sell it in maragiti that's not the agribusiness i'm talking about i'm really talking about commercializing agribusiness whereby by the time you're starting this venture into investing in that agribusiness, be it in horticulture, if it's dairy, fishery, whatever agribusiness, you need to know that I'm putting money into this investment, but I also understand the value chain and I understand the market. So you probably want to be having contracts, for example, with supermarkets, contracts with um, um, you know, hotels when they come back, restaurants, 
when you're starting this agribusiness, you need to know where you're going to sell it. That's the future. The future is in agribusiness. And when I talk about agribusiness, it's not only production, but the value addition. How do I turn mangoes into mango juice? How do I turn tomatoes into, tomato, into ketchup, right? That is the future. The second thing you need to be looking at outside agribusiness is actually real estate, right? So real estate, like I mentioned, is a true and tested investment asset class. But I think what will happen in the new normal, it's not about just capital gains or appreciation of the real estate asset class. You really need to think about cash flow, right? Cash flow is key. Cash flow is key because if you if your asset is not generating cash flow and you're in a situation like this where you need money, then you cannot, um, you find yourself selling it at a cheaper price, so it will not be a good idea. So the future really is to look at real estate which has cash flow. So you need to be looking at if I have land, how do I develop it so that I can get rental income? And it could be residential, it could be commercial. Uh, although commercial, you probably want to be looking at things like warehousing, not necessarily office buildings, because that has already been done. So real estate would be a really good asset class. The other thing you really need to be looking at is business funding, especially us who are women leaders and we are, we are in business, you know, you're on a board, you understand the importance of funding because funding will be what is needed to start any business. And that has always been a challenge for women and the youth. So the future and where you'll get really good return is you figure out how to set up a funding structure. If you actually have a funding structure where you can generate, where you can come together as women or as a group of people and start lending out. And I'm not talking about micro lending, no, not micro lending. There's something in business where there's, there's a segment of business who are not really taken care of, right? So most banks will, will lend to corporates or larger SMEs. And then we've had these micro lenders lending to micro businesses. I'm talking about this part where we call the missing middle, right? The missing middle are businesses that are formal, that need money, that are doing well, but nobody seems to pay attention to them. I believe that the future are the, of the people who will make a lot of money are the people who actually look into putting up structures that lend to these formal businesses that really need short-term lending, that really need lending that will generate um, that will be able to scale up their business. And I can tell you, if you give a woman money, she's going to pay it back. And also the youth are coming up with very great ideas using technology. So those are the three things that I think that all of you need to be looking at if you're looking to grow money in the next couple of years or the next decade, because this is something that people were not paying attention to before, but this is what you need to be paying attention to in the future. Um, Jackie, I don't know how long I have, but um, I... Um, we have Jackie? about, yes, I can hear you. We have about uh, 10 minutes to 10 minutes. six okay. o'clock. Uh, but can, uh, can I interject and just ask some two questions and then we will okay. take up on other questions as again as you try and sure. close up so that we can allow an, another 10 minutes. Um, okay. To our lovely participants, we may run this and, and close it at 6.10, so kindly bear with us so that we can be able to allow Anne to share her thoughts uh, with us as she had planned and scheduled. Somebody asks, and this is basically because you have also mentioned real estate, so what advice would you give regarding investment in stock market for long-term speculations because the share price of different companies have now dropped? And then um, I'll collaborate and, and, and just put that together with the what, it, what, invest, uh, what about investment in real estate because the pandemic, uh, the pandemic um, has made the purchasing power decrease and therefore creating room for steeper price cuts. So this is just a, a round uh, advice on long term in which you say it is actually a good idea, things to do with five years and above is what we should be looking at and is much more safer. And you have also given us the three areas that we should um, think of investing due to the pandemic, which is agriculture sector. Um, you have talked about uh, real estate and then business funding. 
So I hope that answers. Do you have anything else that you want to add on that? Um, I, I would say just answer the part for the stock market. So for the stock market, I think this is a good time for people to invest if they're thinking long term. But if they're thinking short term, you have to work with the advisor who will make sure they're watching the market. Um, so you need to get a really good person who has a track record for that. In regards to real estate, I believe the future is really not um, just buying subdivided land and waiting for it to appreciate. Because we've been looking at the numbers, we've been seeing the trend, and the past decade was really good. The past decade, let's say the past 15 years have been really good. People were buying uh, land and it was appreciating really quickly. So that's the way people have been thinking, you know what, that is the way to actually create wealth. But we've reached a point where land has become too expensive, right? So you're going to see either the prices stabilize or go down. So if you're looking to actually just buy land for the sake of land, I would, it would only make sense if you're looking to not use that, that piece of land another decade or so. That's when the prices will go back. But if you're looking at, you know, midterm investing, then I don't think the plot is a good idea to do. The real estate that I'm advising people to look at is real estate where you'll get cash flow. So, and then also in real estate, the opportunity will happen whereby you can put your money in, for example, a real estate fund. There are different developers and um, um, like the REITs or different real estate funds who actually get what are considered sophisticated investors to put money into the fund so that they can actually do big projects. Those are the opportunities that I see people will be, will, will be able to generate good returns uh, because um, in this case, um, you will be able to um, add value to the land and then you'll be able to sell um, the real estate and real estate usually takes about two, three years um, to, to be developed. And I think at that time you will see a change in the economy and people will probably be making more money because I actually believe Africa is still rising, even with this COVID, the opportunities and there'll be, we're in a position whereby just as we finish up this crisis, there'll be more businesses scaling up uh, jobs will be created. So in the next couple of years, people will have the purchasing power that they need to actually buy real estate. So um, that's just what I would add. All right. Thanks, Anne. And, 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 and it is advisable that we do have an emergency fund. Um, I think different yep. experts have said it should be six times. Uh, it's ne I'm, I'm never too sure whether it's six times my net or six times my gross, but I don't know what is the best practice. Is it advisable to put my emergency fund in government bonds? Mm, okay, this is what I advise people <laughs> to do, right? First of all, it's actually, I usually used to say three to six months of your monthly expenses, right? So you know my expenses, this amount, three to six months. And that's because within three to six months, you know you probably are able to get a job or your business will recover. So that's why that is happening. But after COVID, I'm thinking maybe we need to be actually having at least 12 months because we really don't know. But you do not want to put your money in government bonds because government bonds are long term. So when you're talking about a bond, you're talking about uh, uh, um, 12 months and over, right? Anything less than uh, uh, 12 months of the treasury bill. You don't want to put your money there because two things. One, um, it's, it's, it's not liquid, right? I always recommend people to invest in the money market because when you're investing in a money market fund, it's taking your money and also putting it in government bonds, government, you know, treasury bills, but it's also taking your money and putting it in banks. It's taking your money and putting it in commercial paper. Commercial paper just means short-term lending to businesses, right? So when you invest, when you put your, your emergency fund in a money market fund, what it is, is you're easily able to access it within two to three days, right? So if an emergency happens, you can easily access it, but also you're not putting everything in one thing you're not putting it in you know a treasury or into the bank this diversification so if anything happens you're secure again the goal is always to diversify you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket and a money market i believe does that than putting it in just one thing so that's what i would recommend 
All right, thank you. So emergency fund is money that you have put aside just in case anything happens. The advice is that it, it may not be um, a good idea to put everything in one basket. You would need to diversify your investment. As you are st still speaking about uh, bonds, government bonds, what about infrastructure bonds? Because we know that they do have an advantage of tax. Um, it is yeah. long term, but uh, the, the tax element is good enough. Um, would that be a better option than the one-year bond? Yes, I, I would say with investing, it depends. So you want to speak now with a wealth advisor and actually understand. If you would need that money within a certain period, then maybe, then yes, you want to do that because like you say, there are um, tax benefits to that. So uh, you don't want to put that into an emergency fund, but if you're looking at part of diversifying your portfolio and putting some money in a fixed income, then you want to probably put that into an infrastructure bond. But there are different things that are happening. Um, um, the Kenyan government and different bonds which are out there. And, and, and you also have to look at um, is Kenya government borrowing too much? Should you be uh, should you be worried? So I think um, whoever wants to put money in, in this um, infrastructure bonds can do that, but, not, but a percentage of your investment, not all your money goes into an infrastructure bond just because you want to take advantage of the tax benefit. So you want to still diversify, but that's a good option to have. Quite some great insights, uh, Anne, I must say. I think sometimes we do not appreciate the fact that uh, there's expertise for everything and just thinking about i need a business coach i need a financial advisor to be able to guide me and help me make the right decisions in my investment maybe something that has not crossed over our mind so i think now uh, we may need to think of investing um, the money that we have saved uh, over the last couple of saturdays not um, spending on kfc and dinners and maybe coffee yeah. meetings which are business <laughs> meetings uh, to invest in a, a financial advisor who can help us. Let me allow you to finish up your presentation in the next 10 minutes, then we will go back into another session of uh, answering more of the questions from the ladies. Is that okay? That is great. So um, the, the second part I wanted to talk about is really how do you create wealth in business, whether it's your family business or what I call an entrepreneur, so you're in working for somebody else um, and, and, and you're growing that business because that's another way to create wealth. When you're creating wealth, it's either through investment income or through business profits, right? So when you're looking at uh, creating wealth through a business, really the way to go about it is to make sure that this business become successful because you have a right, you have a good business plan. So I'm telling a lot of business owners, this is the time for you to review your business plan Okay, ladies, I think we just lost Anne again, so we will get uh, Hannah to sort her out quickly just to get her back on session. Apologies for that. Are you able to hear me, though? Let's chat. Um, social connection. These sessions are very difficult to know if you're connecting with people, but can you hear me? I know we've lost Anne, but we will get her back shortly. Yes. So let's um, just do a brief recap as we try and sort and to get back on board. Uh, we have been speaking on the importance um, of just being able to manage your wealth. I will definitely reach out to more of the questions that uh, people have asked when Anne comes back and finishes her presentation. Members have requested that we extend slightly after 6.10 just to allow Anne complete her presentation and get to the questions. So we do appreciate your comments and uh, we will. We definitely prepared for you, so we will allow Anne to do that. Now, it, um, uh, I just want to give a recap. You must be deliberate to invest, put in a certain amount of money every month. And um, with this, I think there've been, there's been a lot of different uh, other initiatives. Uh, I don't know if you've heard about the 52 week challenge, which is a very simple thing. So I want to come back into reality. Sometimes it might be difficult to get 50,000 shillings every month and save to have about a hundred million in 25 years. Lovely money, but how do I make it much more easier for me 
Um, there's a simple thing that I have done with my mentee, uh, which is 52 week challenge. I think there's a lot of people who have done it. Safaricom put it up on board um, where they were just advising you to decide how much money you want to save every month, every week, and then um, or you save that and at the end of the year you have a certain amount of money. So we did a wild guess and we just saw, um, if I said I wanted to save 700 shillings every week, I have about a million at the end of the year. If I took my 1 million into wealth management, it gives me a return of about 10,000 shillings. I mean, 10%. Um, and uh, that is money that I have disciplined myself to save. So part of the tips, you can decide a certain amount, 50 shillings every week. Please be very deliberate and just ensure that uh, you save that 50 shillings. Um, and then that 50 shillings, you can decide on where to put it. And that is just discipline that you can start with. How can I make money to invest? There's a lot of things. Have you done a self-assessment? Do you know what your strengths are? Are you leveraging on your strengths? Are you doing something about it? You can actually make money using your strengths. And then you can put this money aside to see how you can actually invest that money. Long-term investments are good. However, you need a financial advisor or a business coach to be able to assist you on where to spend your money. So again, we have just been, um, uh, been made aware that there are these individuals who are pretty much important. And just to think about it, during this crisis, these people are very important because then they need to advise us on how we can leverage on the situation and make money. So right now, I'm assuming that financial advisors are very popular and actually can make money at this time. Do you have a strength in that area? Some of the things that you need to also consider. Um, crisis provides new roles and opportunities. We are constantly now dependent on um, virtual everything. We are almost going to have dinner virtually now with family members. You have seen weddings and funeral services go virtual. I can see Anne has joined us. Let me just conclude Anne and then you, we can proceed. So this means that this crisis, this, this time that there's crisis, there's opportunity for new roles, new job descriptions or uh, new business ideas that have come in place. What are you doing about it? You could, um, I read, was it in Machakos or somewhere where overnight there's a company that decided to uh, produce masks. And when we started having the surgical masks, someone quickly thought about the cloth masks. And it was a, it was a, there was a debate, is it safe, is it not safe? Now it is safe. And people are actually making money to send. So crisis can provide business opportunities and new roles. Zoom has made so much money. They had no plan with this. It never came on board. Pharmacies did not know all about this. So have you tried to identify and scan the environment and check what are people reliant, um, relying on, on every day? Parents have become teachers. Has anybody taken time to teach parents to be teachers? Right? What are you doing about it? Um, do you have skill set in that? Are you good in that area? Uh, what other virtual opportunities can you provide? So just doing a scan and understanding that there's a, an opportunity here. And as Anne is trying to say, how do we invest? I'm sure you're thinking, where am I getting that money? And here I am saying, um, scan yourself, look at what strengths you have and leverage on your opportunities. Anne, um, I'd like you to proceed with your session before you go off again. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. I'm hoping this time it will not go off. But um, just because of time, I think I just wanted to spend some time here. I know we've spent a lot of time about figuring out how do I create wealth, but what's important is about also how do I manage it. And especially at this time where you're saying, okay, I might not have the money myself, or even if I have money, I don't have enough to do great things. I've been saying that this is really the time when people need to be coming together as family and really looking at the family estate because collectively you can do a lot much, you can do much better than if you're doing it by yourself. So when you're really looking at a family estate and if you look at the wealthy of the wealthy, that's how they do it, right? Um, if I, I was looking at the, I think it was, um, is it PwC or Ernest & Young? No, no, no. It's this company called Asoko. They were actually doing research around the, the, the private companies that are, are run in Kenya and the large ones. They're all family businesses, right? And these are businesses that are going second generation, third generations. They're really doing really well. And the reason that they're able to overcome situations like 
look like crisis is because they're able to do it together. As a family, everyone has different um, skill sets um, and you're connected really as blood, but also because you're going towards a common vision. So when you're really saying, I want to create and manage well, you really have to say, how do I do this with the people in my family? And I think this is a really great time, especially because we are stuck in the house. Um, after seven, we can't go anywhere to be having this conversation with your family and say, okay, how do we put together a family a financial plan? How do we manage our wealth together? The kind of property that we have, should we buy more? Should we li liquidate it? If we're doing philanthropy, how should we structure it so that we're known for this particular type of philanthropy? If you understand like people like Bill and Melinda Gates, they decided healthcare was something they wanted to focus on. So if you're really, um, in a position where you can do these things, I think this is the time you want to look into that. You really want to start planning your estate and how you're going to transfer your wealth. Uh, if you're in business, you need advisors who will help you make sure that the business continuity understand there's a business succession plan. You really want to start having financial training for your children because you don't want your children to grow up in privilege and then when the money gets transferred to them, they spend it all, right? So these are the things that you really need to be doing right now. Governance in a family, just like a company, is very important, right? You need to be able to have a structure about how you run the family estate. And like I said, you always want to have the right kind of professional advisors to help you with tax, legal, risk, asset protection. That's very, very important. And I'll leave this with you, all of you, because I know, you know you're all leaders in your own right, your family, in your businesses. You are all about saying, I want to grow and manage. My but for me, I always say, I always ask people, why are you doing what you're doing? All this money that you're going to make, why, why are you doing it, right? So you have to understand why you're doing this, uh, what you're doing, why you work so hard. And then once you know the why and you start putting things in place, and now you can then now go to an advisor who can show you how to do. How do I invest in real estate? How do I invest in the business? How do I invest in the stock market? But because from the very beginning, you know why and you actually have a plan in place, which now the advisor can help you execute. But as a leader, you have to, I think that as a leader, you want to be remembered for something. So whatever money, you, you make, you want to make sure that you're able to use it in the community for impact. And this is a really good time because a lot of people are suffering that you can actually give what you have, be it money, be it your time, be it your expertise, whatever it is that you can that would actually touch somebody's life, that is what you want to do. You want to be able to do that so that then you, by the end of your life, you'll know that you've succeeded by doing what was right and what you wanted to do because you had a vision for your life and you're able to, to do that. And the last thing I would say is um, what we've been doing at Regal Africa is I usually sit down with my clients and we go through the eight step process that I mentioned earlier, all the way from financial net worth, you know, asset protection, all the way to asset planning. But I've realized, especially in right now, um, because of the crisis, a lot of people are not spending money or they're cautious but people have time to do it themselves. So what we came up with at Regal Africa is we came up with what we call um, the workbook, which is a workbook that you can actually do it yourself uh, with your family and you go through the eight step process and you'll be able to understand your whole financial picture. Once you understand the fi your financial picture, then you can actually take the steps to actualize and make sure that you're growing your, your, your wealth and you're managing your wealth. So if you have any questions, mm -hmm. then I think it would be best then you reach out to women on board and they can connect you to me. And I would be very glad to assist you that. So with that, I want to say, Janky, thank you for the opportunity to speak to your members and be able to just share some of the information that I had, what I see coming, and I think what they can do right now. But um, the future, I think, will be great. But this is the time to think reflect and re-strategize. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anne. Uh, we are still engaging you because there's a couple of questions that are still coming. And okay. it would be glad it's 6-12. Uh, we did uh, mention in your absence that we will try and ensure that we cover everything up because of the 
technical hitches we've had and we also started at 608 so just to cover up and ensure that we have not locked you people want to feel um enriched and that you have given them all that you had prepared uh so we do appreciate that now there's a question um is it advisable or would you advocate uh, for me to take a loan and put up a commercial building instead of waiting for my savings to be enough. So I take up a mortgage and I'm assuming, yes, I take up a mortgage and this mortgage I decide to take up, um, put up a commercial building instead of waiting for my savings. So instead of me um, building my home, then I build, a com I put up a commercial building. What would be your feedback on that? Okay, I would first of all say what type of commercial building, okay, because okay. they're different times. So if you're really talking about a commercial office space, I would say you want to rethink that. We do a lot of uh, real estate, um, we do feasibility studies, we research around what's going on in the real estate market, that's part of what we do at Recall Africa, and there's an oversupply, right? There's an oversupply of commercial office space, um, also with what's happening right now with COVID, with people actually working from home, there might be some companies that will say, you know what, I don't need this office space, I can actually get people working from home. So in the future, you might find that some people will not renew their leases. So if you're talking about commercial office space, I would really rethink where and for what. So if it's Nairobi, I would say Nairobi is already done. But if you're really looking at county level, there are certain counties that don't have enough commercial space, so you want to look at that. But if I'm really looking at um, commercial real estate, I'll probably be looking at um, warehousing, logistics, because there will always be trading happening. And we're seeing the, the growth of e-commerce. So people have to store their goods somewhere. So you want to look at that kind of commercial real estate. Or maybe you want to put up a hospital. That's still commercial real estate. Uh, maybe you want to put up private schools, right? Or you want to put up, you know, I, I don't know about hotels right now because of what's going on with COVID, but you probably want to look at uh, the kind of commercial real estate that will always be used. And like I said, hospitals is one thing. But if you're looking at commercial office spaces, I would rethink that. Um, malls, I'd rethink that because the trend that we're seeing or what we consider the new normal is like people going, that's, um, not so many people are spending so much money in offices. We'll see the growth more maybe of actually co-working spaces or virtual offices. And um, we'll see more people actually doing e-commerce, so less need for malls. So I would say it depends. So if that's what you want to do, then you want to speak to a real estate advisor who can help you. And in regards to taking debt right now, I can tell you a lot of banks are cautious also because as a former banker, I know banks will only lend to you if they know you'll have the ability to pay them back. So the question is, will you be able to show the bank that you will be able to pay back this facility if you borrow? And if you're able to do that, then, you know, um, then, you know, go ahead. But I think you need a lot more research and understand the trends that are happening before you make that decision something that there's also something that has been very popular of late um we have got younger people feel that our parents have actually paid and and our parents are in the room but allow me to feel young <laughs> at this moment um people our people tend to younger people tend to feel that our parents have paid mortgages all their life and therefore they are not encouraged to really take mortgages there's something popular called airbnb which i know you know um is it practical now that the real estate market is coming lower? Does it make sense for me then to take a mortgage? Because perhaps I am able to um, present uh, stable financial uh, records, uh, depending on maybe whether I am in business or employed. Uh, is it practical then to take advantage of the current situation under the real estate, it being one of the three critical areas you said we need to focus on and keenly look at when it comes to investment and then um, put it up for Airbnb. Uh, I don't know if that would maybe be practical. Now that um, maybe I would not uh, think of taking a mortgage to stay in the house. Um, I, I say also it depends, but um, this is what I'm, I'm saying. Definitely, 
if you're able to get a good property, and I'll just use for example here in Nairobi, mm. you're seeing prices in Kilimani go down. You're seeing prices in in Kilelesha go down or Westlands, right? And those are prime areas where Airbnb was thriving, right? And it will come back because after COVID, people will still be traveling. If you're able to find uh, an apartment, for example, in that particular area, then it might be a good idea to look into the option. And you have to work the numbers. One of the things that uh, I believe all of you know, but there is a new law that is saying that you can actually take 40% of your pension to actually put it into, to use that money to actually uh, go towards uh, owning a house, right? So you have to then say, okay, if I buy this property, maybe you buy an apartment in Kinemani, a three bedroom apartment, you can live in one room and then do Airbnb in the other two rooms, right? Where you're living, you're also making money off the other rooms. So there are different strategies, but it depends. So I would say, just look at your situation. Do you have enough savings? Do you have a pension that you can take advantage of? Look, in real estate, it's all about location, location, location. If you're trying to do Airbnb in, I don't know, in the middle of nowhere, probably not a good idea. But I would say there are many variables that you can look at. So I wouldn't tell them not to do it, but you want to sit down, work the numbers and say, can I take advantage of the reduced prices? I have a good location. I have money that I can put in. And um, yeah then I can say it's, it's a good idea because then you will be able to get cash flow from Airbnb, but still be able to live in that particular location. If actually, that's, that's, you want to do. actually yeah. that's a brilliant idea, especially for students who are also coming by. And uh, right now we have seen even universities like um, Strathmore actually providing um, their courses and they have become so popular that we have a lot of people coming from other countries in Africa to come and actually take in their studies. And a lot of people around the area of Nairobi West Madaraka made, um, a, a, got a good opportunity to make some money from the students uh, being yeah. able to take up that place. That's good. Now that we know that we need a financial advisor, how can I be able to identify um, a good uh, financial advisor? I would say um, a good financial advisor is someone who has a track record. They have experience in the financial service industry, be it in banking, investment in banking, asset management. You want to find someone who's just not selling you products, right? So when most people think about a financial advisor, they think of someone who's selling them insurance or selling them you know, stocks or something. That is a person who will sell you that particular um, financial product but I think the best advice and what we've been doing at Regal Africa is really creating whereby someone is offering you a holistic advice and they're not selling you a product. What they're doing is they're offering you guidance and the right, um, so, and some of the solutions that you can review to make the right make financial decision for yourself. So when you're looking for an advisor, you wanna look at someone who's just not selling your product, but has your best interest at heart because the goal you're going to them is because you want to make money. So you do not want to find a financial advisor who then will make money and you will not get what you want to get, right? So you have to be uh, um, careful about that. And I would say when you're looking for a financial advisor, get, um, get referrals, talk to you know, family, friends, colleagues, people who have actually been helped by somebody. That's a good way um, to pass. Um, find out who they are and then um, go from there. But the real, what I always say, good advice doesn't come cheap. So yeah, <laughs> definitely. Be careful who you talk to, yeah. <laughs> having been a banker and having, uh, now you're a business coach, um, I'm sure you have experienced uh, dealing with various people um, and also dealing with different uh, professionals. Uh, what would you say uh, or rather, what, what, what feedback would you give in their personal finance management for professionals? And I'll give an example. Uh, are there, we have different professions, accountants, lawyers, doctors, HR professionals like us. Yeah. Do you think that they have a problem managing their finances? Um, and do they need to get wealth advice? I know this is, uh, we're just clubbing this into professionals. Sometimes... Yeah we feel that we are such professionals 
um, and we forget about the nitty gritties of our financials. Do you think that they require to also be guided on wealth management? Because some of them like lawyers um, and accountants who are running things on their own and doctors, these people who are able to do practice on their own, they have a lot of opportunity. Is it an area that... In fact, in fact, earlier when I was starting the presentation, I told you our focus, our what we call epic clients, executives, professionals, entrepreneurs, and creatives. The reason we chose professionals is because professionals are good at what they do, but not necessarily good at managing money, right? Right? So we actually had a product which we were calling Regal Law, which we were really focusing on lawyers. They're good as lawyers, but sometimes they're not good at running a law firm right? So, so when you're a professional, uh, you're able to do service, for example, in a corporation, but you can also start your own firm. And managing a business is very different from you, what you are taught to do your technical expertise. So that's why I recommend professionals to actually have a wealth advisor because the wealth advisor will help you look at your wealth holistically. Even accountants are good at looking at businesses. But I can tell you, I've met so many who don't budget themselves, right? Right? <laughs> so they don't have like what I'm trying to offer, which is a work plan. Look at them and you're like, you know, what's your estate plan? You know, are you saving for retirement? They don't have that. Yet they're really good at their jobs, right? So all professionals, it doesn't matter who you are, you definitely need that expertise. If you're a lawyer, you have legal expertise, but not necessarily financial expertise. So for every individual, I always say, if you're a professional, understand what your strengths are, and then know what it is that you need help in, and that's when you now go to what advisor who can assist you there. All right, thank you, Anne. We have got six minutes to 6.30, and I'd uh, like to stop at 6.30. I will just take you through two more questions uh, so that I can do justice to the members who have joined and asked uh, questions and also to the rest of us who've not been able to ask questions. We could be able to benefit and I think we have heavily benefited from the other questions. Um, offshore, going back uh, to bonds, is it advisable to invest in offshore bonds in hard currency at a time like this with a five to, um, when we are, we are at a five to 10 year horizon. Do you think um, offshore bonds would make sense at this time? In investing, I always say it depends, it depends, it depends. For all my clients, I recommend that part of your portfolio, at least you invest in offshore investments. Again, for diversification purposes, right? Um, um, so, and, and also another thing that I've noticed, especially depending on your age, maybe you have children that you want to go to university to the UK or to the US, like where I went, or Asia. When you're actually accumulating your wealth and you want to use that money for the education, you probably want to be investing in hard currency, right? So if you want your child to go to the U.S., you want to be putting money toward the education in U.S. dollars, right? Um, but um, when you're looking at offshore investment, again, you also want to work with a professional who is able to find those opportunities there. But I have experienced globally and I know the returns that are done around the world and I can tell you now and the future the returns here in Kenya in Africa are amazing if you're willing to take the risk right they are yes. amazing they are not they, I don't know anywhere in the world where you can get you know double digit returns in conservative investments like you know money markets and fixed income if you're going to the US if you're going to the UK you're going to Asia Australia the, the single digits, right? Um, so you want to uh, be, um, you want to invest offshore, but a portion of your portfolio, not everything. So that would be my advice for you. Uh, having listened to this, there's quite a number of sessions that have come up uh, currently. We have mm -hmm. a lot, a lot, a lot of sessions that uh, we have been able to get online. Uh, we do make informed choices to see which one do we join. And of us, 80 of us who have joined this session today as are joining because the whole idea of uh, managing our wealth and growing it was quite critical to us. However, I may have attended this session 
but I am a first timer. I do not have, um, I don't have cash really. I don't have capital, but I probably can start saving a little amount. Uh, what options would you give a first timer who wants to just start investing now? And this is barely because I have listened to this session today. I am convinced. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting from minimal. I probably don't even have that much. Okay. If you are starting out, I always say you want to work with professional money managers because they are the experts in investing and they do it day in, day out. So you want to start off, um, and for us, we work with eight fund managers. So if you're interested, we can uh, help them with that. You want to work with um, a licensed fund manager because you can start off with as little as a thousand shillings in a money market. You can put money in the equity, uh, uh, in an equity fund for very little money, right? So it doesn't matter where you are, you can start investing today with however much money that you have. I always tell people this, everyone can put aside a thousand, a hundred shillings every day. A hundred shillings every day in a month, that's 3,000 shillings, right? With 3,000 shillings, you can actually invest in money markets in you know in equity funds in in these different things so um you want to work with a professional money manager because they they uh they're professionals in what they do and then as you grow as your money grows and now you have a lot more money when you have a lot more money there are, all, there are more options, right? Like Ali was talking about, you can become an angel investor, you can put your money into private equity, you can in venture capital, you can invest in structured funds. There are so many options out there. You can go into commercial agribusiness, like I was talking to, to you about. You can go into business funding because you have more money. But when you're starting out and you have you know, 10,000, 100,000, a million, that kind of money, start from where you are, work with a professional fund manager, and then you build from there. Thank you very much, Anne. You had also said something around partnering with people for greater opportunities. I was just looking at women on boards. We are around, uh, we, we can easily be 250. Um, mm -hmm. If I contributed a thousand shillings in one year, do you know we have three million shillings for just a thousand shillings? <laughs> and how, where can we invest three million shillings? We can invest three million shillings in something huge. So it's just a thousand shillings times 250 people every month a year we have three million invest that money forget about it for some time so we've learned quite a lot of things thank you thank you very much and that is part of what women on boards is there to do so we are we are here we join uh you come understand what happens on women women on boards join learn and then lead so you are expected to go back and lead based on what you have learned from uh, the different leaders and the different ladies and other people. And there's a lot of opportunities to network. The Women on Boards Network is an initiative that was um, actually formed uh, uh, on uh, the aim of initiating uh, and promoting, promoting and encouraging women in board leadership. And this is both voluntary and for people who would also be uh, selected on the role. The network provides a platform that brings together uh, women from diverse fields and ranks just to ensure that they are able to be skilled up uh, into board positions. However, this does not mean that women on boards is for the women only. We have gentlemen who are part of us and a couple of questions have also been asked by the gentlemen. Thank you so much from joining with uh, 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 one of the founders uh, who works with a pink card. That is what Catherine, our chair lady, uh, that's how he introduce, she introduces him. Uh, Calvin is also one of the founder members who is part of the session today. And Kirote, we all know Kirote, she's also here. Apologies from Rose and uh, Catherine who are not able to join with us. Thank you so much for joining. Um, culture as part of our culture and uh, culture is the way we do things. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for joining the session. We usually, at the end of each session, take a photo. So at this point, your host, uh, our host, Hannah, um, will allow you to switch on your videos so that at the background, she can be able to take um, photos. Catherine is also here. So hiya, Catherine, nice to know that you're around. Thank you very much. Um, it is always good to respect that when the chair is there, um, you allow and give her an opportunity. 
So Catherine, would you want me to give you an opportunity to close? But just before you do that, um, Samuel is joining us all the way from Canada. Thank you so much for joining. I also saw Brenda, who uh, took us through the other session last time with the younger teens. So, and we also have some sessions with the younger teens. And actually what I was thinking is that we need to encourage the younger people to begin creating. You see, as we are growing, we are managing and growing our wealth. We need to help the younger people in creating and growing the wealth. Because you do all this and then you forget that you will create all this wealth and maybe one day leave them to manage, but they may not know how to manage it. So you need to start working with the younger people also to learn creating and then enabling. A couple of you, I can see you've already taken your poses. Thank you very much. Um, before I allow Catherine to just give um, thanks to Anne, who has been able to share with us her wealth, I just want to take you through the upcoming uh, Women on Boards event. There's the corporate governance training that is going to happen between 1st to 5th of June 2020. So please reach out to Agnes um, and, and, and make sure that you, you do enroll for this. Then there's a board profiling and personal positioning workshop. How do you position yourself for the board? And then how can you profile your CV? Very important and there'll be assessments to just uh, help you know who you are and where your strengths are. And then finally, there's a board talk with um, our, our, sp the, our speaker for the next board talk is going to be Mary Wamai, who is the Executive Director, Equity Group. Uh, and she's going to be taking us through the board next board talk session. So that is something that you need to look out to. Um, Catherine, are you able to hear us and just give your final remarks to Anne, who has done a lot of justice? Thank you very much. Uh, for the rest of the members, please give us your comments share your feedback. I hope I have done justice to your questions. Thank you so much for tolerating us um, and having, having bared with us to have us until 6.34. Uh, we, are, we are quite enlightened to have you. And, um, um, and thank you as well. We do appreciate your time. Asante Sana for, for being with me. us and thank for you. sharing your knowledge. Uh, we have learned a lot of insights and we will put that into practice. Catherine? Thank you, Jackie. Actually, the man with the pink card is the one closing for us today. <laughs> but before I hand over to the man with the pink card, and thank you so much. This was awesome. I, I really have enjoyed myself. And from today, I'm going to put aside just 50 bob. I am sure by the end of next week, I will have quite a pot that I could use. So thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, and do have a great weekend. Keep safe. Calvin, over to you. Uh, good evening, everyone. And thank you very much, uh, Jackie. Thank you, uh, Anna. That, that was very, very insightful. Uh, we are really glad to have listened in. I also want to thank everyone uh, across the board who managed to come in and listen. I'll just say a few points that I took out of the conversation. Uh, on, on growing and on managing well. Primarily, it, it was about uh, the different ways in which we can create wealth, either by developing, growing, and eventually selling a business, by lending, uh, particularly to a class of SMEs which is yet to be served uh, very efficiently, by investing uh, in real estate, uh, and specific classes of real estate, not just uh, uh, open, uh, agriculture, and I learned something about business farming, uh, the stock market, which is one of the traditional investments, um, among infrastructure bonds, uh, and even the re regular bonds, uh, among other things. So thank you very much for uh, those teeth bits on how we can go about uh, this. And uh, Anne did talk about the need for diversification. Don't put all your eggs uh, in one basket, very, very important. Uh, and the need for us professionals to actually appreciate the need for other professionals to guide us where we don't have our strength. Uh, I can see Catherine, particularly the lawyers need uh, professional advice uh, on, when it comes to managing their law firm, uh, hiring, financials, investment, among uh, other things. Now, and uh, I think the very uh, pertinent point that she began with was the mentor shift, the mentor shift towards wealth creation uh, wealth growth and uh, wealth management. 
Uh, thank you really much, uh, very much, uh, Anne, for that presentation. Now, let me close off uh, by just speaking briefly about women on board. Uh, for those who may not be our members, we want to welcome you most sincerely uh, to more of these webinar webinars hosted by uh, women on board. Uh, we are trying to take this opportunity during the COVID uh, pandemic season to share knowledge, enlighten, interact, and uh, get to grow each other as much as possible. And while we do so, we want to encourage you to join uh, the Women on Board Network, uh, where we do training, uh, mainly on governance issues. Uh, we do placement uh, of our members on various uh, corporate boards. Uh, we do consultancy, uh, including structuring on uh, governance. And uh, finally, perhaps very importantly, uh, we have mentorship programs uh, for our members where we pair you with uh, captains of industry and you get to grow uh, in that area for a couple of months as we train and prepare you for uh, the roles on the board, um, as well as how to give value to boards once you're on them. So I want to encourage everyone uh, to join. I will request Hannah to put on, to just send an, um, uh, our email at the bottom of the screen on the chat, our email, our phone numbers. Uh, please feel free to contact us immediately and then we will be able to give you more information on how to join women on board and to be part of this great team uh, and participate together with us. Uh, Jackie, our moderator for this evening, sincerely we thank you uh, for a job well done. Uh, ladies, I think the last thing to do as we look at that email that we were uh, putting at the bottom of the screen is to take the photos uh, for this occasion. Uh, we take the traditional photos like we do in our physical forums. And so may I request everyone to put on their camera, those who are comfortable doing that, and then uh, we will take uh, the photos. Um, Hannah, uh, I think we are ready for the moment. Can we all... Um Yes, Anna is ready, so we can take photos. I can see the poses. I can see other okay. people are inviting others. Asante ni sana. And uh, yes, okay. A couple of us have joined. Hannah will just let us know if she has taken enough photos. Thank you so much, everyone, for being part of this it's a great day. Thank you for your comments as well. Please follow uh, Women on Boards on Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and uh, you can also visit the website to get a lot of more information. Thank oh. you. And feel free to wave or do something that makes you happy. And I can see people have lovely hearts, all sorts of things. I'm feeling so nice that I can see everyone. <laughs> Thank I you very you much. Our contacts are on the screen on the uh, messages. Thank you. Thank you too. Anna, you've taken yes, all the photos. Yes, you're done with the photos. Ah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a good evening, everyone. Have a thank good you, Anne. Everyone, Bye. Jackie. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.